All right, everybody, we, uh, it's time to fire up the mill. We've got this red oak log here that's getting pretty punky. As you can see, there's just a lot of sponginess on the outside. So we're gonna see if this is still worth milling. We're gonna put it on the mill. I think it's going to be. Obviously, it's red oak. So I think once we get some squishy layer on the outside removed, we'll have some good stuff underneath. But let's mill it up and see what she looks like. Okay, we finally got it on the mill, and I know some of you guys are grumbling, why don't I have a grapple on the front of this tractor? If you're new to the channel, there's a lot of reasons why there's not a grapple on that 2004 Coyote. Uh, first of all, it's not a quick attach, and to do that conversion, you know, by the time I get the adapter plate, um, buy the grapple attachment, put the extra hydraulic channel on the front, all the expenses of the grapple, you're looking at thousands and thousands of dollars so definitely on the list of things i'd love to have but uh ain't happening just yet and same with even pallet forks pallet forks would be cheaper but uh, i want to be able to switch them out i use that bucket constantly and i have to if i have to do the system where i got to remove the pins and uh, swap that out that's just not very practical as much as i need to swap back and forth but that's where we are anyway okay back to the log so the log we're looking at uh, a red oak log that was given to me uh, when Mark and Daniel came down uh, last summer and milled some logs with us, the uh, logs that they brought, then uh, these were some they left behind said I could obviously have and, and use whatever. So this one's starting to get a little punky. It's a good red oak. We want to open it up and, and get some good uh, four quarter boards out of that. Logs just a cat's whisker over eight feet long and 16 inches in diameter on the short end. The butt end's about 18. So it's a decent sized uh, log. Uh, it's pretty pretty uniform too. As you can see, it's a little snowy and a little brisk here, so we're gonna get the mill warmed up and let her idle for a bit to make sure she's gonna run fine. I tell you, not bad for that Kohler engine. Pull, it started on the second pull, and I haven't started in over a week. And it's been blue cold around here. Love that engine.
so I really lucked out on this log. I was able to isolate the heart just in the way I turned it on the first cut. So now I've flipped it over and have my cut on the bunk, on the bed, I measure and see I'm five and a half inches up to the heart on both sides. So this heart's off-centered, but it's at least lined up on this plane. Make this next cut, it'll still be parallel. Now when I flip it 90 degrees, I'll probably have a little issue there, but I may not mess with it then, because that will just isolate the heart in one board if I turn it another 90 degrees. If you want to know what all that means, uh, there's a video up here where I did it with a white oak just recently and I explained it in detail. Okay, so we've got a nice square cant there. I don't know if you can see on the left side, my left side of the log there, there's a pretty good split. So instead of just slicing and having that split through every board, I'm gonna go ahead and turn 90 degrees so I get my heart line back up. And then I'm gonna cut five inches off that top and turn it 90 degrees because I wanna get some five inch wide boards um, that are going to, most of those are gonna be either rift or quarter song, which is a whole nother discussion, we'll get into that. But uh, turning that 90 degrees, I'll have a couple uh, flat sawn boards, boards on the top and the bottom, but the rest will be uh, rift and quarter sawn. So I really like the look of that. I forgot I got some sexy new ear protection for Christmas. I just keep forgetting to put it on. Kelly keeps reminding me, but I never hear what she's saying. <laughs> Let's try it out, shall we? to 11.
Man, I am really happy with how that turned out. Yeah, that log looked punky and sick and all ate up. Had some neighbors in it, <laughs> as you saw in the close-up. Uh, we displaced a lot of carpenter ants and a couple wood roaches, but uh, that log was solid after, after that first inch and a half of funniness on the outside. That yielded 18 four-quarter boards that are eight feet long and five inches and six inches wide, two variations there. And that's the perfect width for what I want. Uh, it's narrower like that, I don't have to worry about cupping. Obviously I got the heart out of it so that it's gonna cup a lot less. Rift and quarter saw is gonna keep that more stable. Uh, so it's gonna be perfect for some trim work we need to do at the house. Finished off on top with some, this is about 11 quarter boards here. And I wanted to have something a little bit thicker. So if I needed to do, yeah, it's, it's, it's funny when, when I was making furniture, it was always keeping some of this in stock for for table legs or something like that. You know, these massive glue ups you're gonna do. Something like this to dry out, it's gonna take years, but it can end up in the barn and probably be years before I get to it. You saw some of that beautiful quarter sawn, and then there was one spot there where I tossed the water on that was book matched quarter sawn, and you just, just saw how those mirrored one another because it was the way that board was cut when it was flipped over. And yeah, just absolutely gorgeous. And you know, from, from a woodworker's perspective, back in the day when it was really into all that, that would have been a high dollar. If, if those two boards and the other boards with it were dried properly, stayed straight, stayed true, and then you presented those to a woodworker, that would be some high dollar inventory right there. It'd be great stuff. So really happy with how that turned out. Uh, the blade was getting a little dull there at the end. <laughs> the log, the one side, I think the fourth side of, of cutting the cant, I believe the log was frozen, so I definitely could feel that on the uh, on the sawmill. So if you've got a mill and, and you have to buy your logs or you go scrounging around for them, keep in mind, if you're talking about hardwood, as long as it doesn't have a massive core rot, even if it's paper on the outside, most likely it's got some good solid in between. That's where you just you know, take a knife, take a hatchet, take something and kind of whittle away on that outside and just see how much rot there is. But even if you go to the end and you see a lot of rot on the end, keep in mind that's going to be, the rot's going to diminish as you go deeper into the log, unless it has core rot. So those can be some great logs that people just want to get rid of or think, oh, that's just nothing but firewood. And you've got a great opportunity to turn it into some beautiful boards. I had a lot of new people come to the channel and appreciate that. Uh, if, if you would, give it a thumbs up, give it a like if you like it, uh, please subscribe if you haven't, and just continue to share if you would. Really excited the feedback we're getting and the response from you guys. I appreciate um, y'all taking the time out of your busy day to watch me monkey around out here. One quick note that maybe didn't show up on the time lapse is me stepping on this frozen pile of sawdust on the way back to the mill to run the next pass and slipped. And man, I busted my hiney. <laughs> It was, just, it was best that it was on time lapse, so you didn't get to see that in real time. But that's part of it. it I wouldn't have cut it out if I had the actual video of that, because that was pretty funny. My knee hurts, but it was pretty funny. All right, take care, everybody. <laughs>